Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. So you're kind of turned around, you might be confused, or you've lost your mojo, or worse yet, you have a sense of hopelessness. Self-pity has come and moved in with no signs of ever leaving, and you can't seem to pull the trigger or do what you know you can do to make it. Well, don't worry, I got you. Hey, this is Michelle Spiva, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. Mm. So you really want to stay with me after the flip because we're going to be talking about the answer is in the knowing. And as usual, I'm going to give you some practical steps. So I'll see you on the flip. Hey there, and thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about how the answer is in the knowing. Have you ever had a time when it seemed like everything was stacked against you and what you needed to do was almost insurmountable? Or maybe you needed a miracle. Well, don't worry, I got you. And I got you so well because I'm going through this and I am telling you, If I can do this, you can do this. Remember, we're keeping this real, and I'm your practical priestess of wisdom serving you daily with the wisdom smacks that either lovingly smack you or give you a little love tap to wake up. And I had to get mine. I had to get myself in order. And I've talked about this in other podcasts where you have to be careful that you watch to make sure that melancholy doesn't set in and you don't get a sense of helplessness and you don't get a sense of self-pity because you are allowing what you see to cloud what you know. And so I just want to let you know up front. The answer is in the knowing, okay? So let's get into it because you know how we do here. We give you some wisdom, we give you some practicality, and we wish you, you know, help you to get it done and get going. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to know, want you to know is, is that, as I said before, you have to know that you know. You see, you have to have the certainty of knowing to do what it is you want to do. You have to understand that when your knowing gets clouded or gets doused or is nowhere to be found, you have effectively gotten in your way by allowing external circumstances to sway you. And we've said it before, I'll say it again. When it comes to the world, the galaxy, the country, however you want to look at it, of you, you are sovereign. You are the king, the queen, the godhead. The buck stops here where it's with you. Now, that is not to displace any kind of deatific relationship you have. I am just simply saying, even if you want to talk about Bible, uh, you know, as it is above, so it is below. And you have dominion in this realm. So just know we're not trying to usurp any of that. I'm not trying to give you any um, craziness. I'm not even, you know, going to go there with humanism or any of that kind of stuff. Just let's keep it, let's keep it, you know, on the fact that when it comes to you, you're the most powerful. You, beloved, are the most powerful. You're the best person, the only person really who can do you. You are the expert of you. And when you allow other things to get in your way, you have effectively allowed yourself to get in the way of what you know, okay? And so 
knowing what it is that you want to do is not just about, oh, I know. It's not even just about getting clear. It's about an inherent drive and fortification that moves you ever closer to what it is you want to accomplish, to be, to do, to have. And it will not be deterred as long as you are feeding it and giving it nutrients to continue to be the engine that it needs to be for you to have the life you want. And so because of that, you got to put some thought and preparation into it. And we're going to be working with that. Okay. So before we do that, I want to talk quickly about some signs of self-pity and hopelessness. And signs of self-pity and hopelessness are all about status. How do you see yourself in uh, relation to your to your world? to other people or whatever. If you catch yourself looking at other people and thinking that they have it easier than you or that they are better than you or any of those things that subjugate you to a lower class or a lower um, level, that gets you in the realm of self-pity. You should not be looking at someone else and saying, I can't do this like them. I can't do this like her. I can't do this like him. It might be the truth that you can't do what they do. But guess what? You can do something equally as good that you're good at. You do not have to try to mix your pineapples with their plums. You don't. And so stop doing it. A lot of people are being duped by the social media agenda of getting folks to be so ocularly dependent on what they see externally that they're not able to be visually superior in what they see on the inside and make that agenda work for them. You know, it's the sheeple kind of thing that if we can get you watching the birdie outside of your mind, that will rob you of the time it takes to fortify what you know that you know that and what you know that you are. And therefore, you'll be easily controlled by your own doing. And so this is a wake up. This is a pattern interrupt. And this is a key component that you can use, I use, we all can use to do what it is that we need to do because the answer is in what you know about what you are, what you want, what you do, and what you have, okay? So hopelessness. I've talked about learned hopelessness and some other things. And little key signs of hopelessness is, um, real quick, um, loss of um, attention to, I'm just going to say it, uh, hygiene, whether it be cleanliness of the body, cleanliness of your home, and those types of things. And also, I'll say this, one of the fastest ways to know if someone is working with self-pity, hopelessness, uh, depression, things that are off kilter, most people think that you can tell it by their eyes. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes that's not the case. A lot of times, because of years and years of having been a hairdresser, cosmetologist on the side to help, you know, fund whatever I wanted to do, I learned it's in the hair. If you want to see if someone is going through something, check the hair. Check the hair. And not just if they're having a bad hair day, but if if you're noticing a difference in the hygiene or the luster of the hair or whatever it is or the thinning of the hair, that could be a pretty good indicator that that's a sign of hopelessness, self-pity, depression, and some others. Because we push out of our heads what is going on inside of us. Why do you think they do drug tests using uh, strands of hair? Because they can go back and read everything that was happening to you at any given period. Your hair is like the rings of a tree. It tells the history of you and it shows it to everybody out you know, in the world. So be mindful of that. Okay. And so I want to just let you know this, that there is good news about this whole answer and knowing and about getting a sense of knowing back that will be able to propel you to what you need to where where you need to be and what you want to do. And that is that understand this change is instant, instant. You can go from hopelessness, self-pity, depression. uh, And I'm not talking about clinical depression. 
but I'm, you know, I'm talking about depression that has been brought on by uh, pressures and stressors and circumstances. You can change in an instant, but understand that the process will take time. You see, there is a prevalent depression going on right now in, I know, in, um, in, in the U.S., and it's been brought on by social and financial isolation. Mm -hmm. There are people who are suffering in silence because of their financial situations, and it has caused depression to come because it is a stressor that does not uh, it, it's very aggressive. It doesn't take time off. It doesn't let you alone when you sleep. It, it <laughs> When you wake up, good morning, I'm right here sitting on your chest. Remember me? Yeah, I'm here. You know, and you're carrying this around and it is hard. You know, <laughs> it's not funny, but it is. In the way we're set up right now, people are being socially isolated because of their finances. Do you know it is hard to date and, and, and find a mate when you don't have any money? You know, broke people need money too. Yeah, I didn't say poor because poor is a state of mind. Broke is just a, um, a temporary situation in your bank account or in your wallet. But broke people need love too, you know, and it, it makes it hard because if you find yourself in that too long, it starts to wear you down. And I do want to say that self-pity and hopelessness and depression, they are not because you were being lazy. They are not because you're a, a horrible person. They are simply uh, the ravages of the world run amok. And I am here today to encourage you and me and all of us that the answer is in what you know. So now let's start talking about how to get back into the knowing. So I have got that done. I'm looking at my time. We're looking good. So let's get to it. So there are three things that I want to talk about to help us get to a place of knowing. And I want to say this, that when you want to make a change, some people call it law of attraction. Some people call it manifestation. One of the main ingredients that either they say up front or they skirt around is that you cannot get to where you want to be without knowing some things about your situation and you. And so knowing is an important and integral ingredient in changing your situation in moving you into anything you want or moving you away from anything you don't want. You have to know that you know that you know. And I'm going to say this, that there are also things that go into your knowing. And for my... Um, people out there of um, the many different organized religions and faiths, you'll be, you'll be uh, very familiar with this because some of the components are grace, faith, hope, and love, and joy. Yeah. And they work to help you stay in your knowing. We'll talk a little bit more about these um, so that you'll understand how they work because they do actually have a job and they're not just great little pleasant platitudes where you put little fat cherub cherubims around them. Because if you really knew how they classify a cherubim, you wouldn't call it a fat little baby. But anyway, I digress. Let's go back. So the main ingredient to getting things, if you want to call it attracting them, if you want to say manifesting them, it's all the same. But what we want to do right now is we want to get our answer. We want to get going and we want to be knowing. So let's start to work on that. So there are three things that we're going to do. We're going to learn how to craft our expectations accordingly. We're going to learn how to reinforce the knowing because it's one thing to have that change. But reinforcement of the knowing gets into that process that takes time. And then we're going to learn how to hold the vision steady. Remember, I just talked about how this ocular uh, distraction of what you see is what's getting a lot of people into this trap. You have to ignore your lion eyes. You have to ignore even the temporary facts that might be staring you in the face. There comes a time when you have to do a, a radical realignment in order to get your answer, in order to get to where you are. They may, they might, 
and they being whoever it is, they might be saying, this is going to happen to you or you or this, you know, is uh, what we're doing. But I'm going to tell you, if you know that you know that you are sovereign when it comes to you, peace be still, the mountains have to crumble. Because when you know, you activate faith, hope, love, joy, all of those things that they attribute to the uh, gifts of the spirit and, and they start to actually work and you're like, whoa, this is deep. All right. But let's get to this practicality. So first, we want to talk about crafting our expectations accordingly. Now, the reason why I said accordingly is because you go from strength to strength and glory to glory. You cannot move from having been hopeless and pitiful and depressed to being a freaking superstar of knowing and faith and hope. You have to work yourself back up because it's a muscle. If you have been uh, languishing in depression on the couch for the last year, do you really think you're going to be able to get up and run a five, uh, five miles an hour? Do you really think that? No, you're going to have to work back up to it. Now, some people's snapback game might be faster than others, but still, you try to go out there and do that and you will hurt yourself and you will cause yourself to fall even worse because now you're dealing with injury because you tried to do stuff too fast, too soon. So we want to start with steps. And the way we want to start with steps is we want to get some small wins that boost our confidence. Confidence is the direct opposite of pity and hopelessness. And when we talk about getting some small wins for confidence, the best way to get a small win of confidence is to get a quick completion of something. Set out to do something that you can get a completion with. But some people, and what I like to do, especially when I'm talking with my clients to try to get this to happen, I tell them, pick something that can be done in an hour that you haven't been able to do or haven't wanted to do. For some people, it's cleaning up their kitchen. Well, for some folks like me, it takes me more than that because I'm slow. But it could be where if you know today I fold up my clothes or today I wash my car or today I get my desk in order, just by doing that gives you a quick win and starts to build your confidence because there is an emotional momentum that happens. Uh, There are certain things that like movement and there are certain things that like speed. So when you start getting these small steps of confidence and tackling one thing within a time period, you um, you enact that law and it's not, I think it's Pareto's, maybe. Uh, don't don't quote me on that. Uh, but there is a law that says that a task takes the amount, the time that you allot it. And so now be reasonable. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say that. Don't set yourself up for failure. If you know that there is something that you've been meaning to do. And first of all, you are not familiar with how to do it and you are guesstimating at best. Be a little more liberal with the amount of time. So I'm telling you, uh, miraculous things can happen in a four hour period. If you need to set your uh, your timer on your on your watch or on your phone and give yourself uh, a half day, four hours. And I say half day, you know, half work day or whatever, four hours to accomplish something. The best way I'm going to tell you to do this is to break it down into two sets of 90 with a 30 minute rest in between and do that. So say, for instance, you got to go in there and tackle um, a a room that has just been junky. You know, let's just face it. You know, you've been ignoring it and you're like, it's time. The the kid's room is a hot mess. And that would give you a sense of uh, completion where you would have your comp, you would start to get back on the road for your confidence. Break it down. 90 minutes, hard hit. 90 minutes, beep, 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 stop. 30 minutes to walk away, get a coffee, a rest break, a reassessment of what you've gotten done and planning for what you're going to do on your next one. And then when you come back, you do your next one. That will have only taken you three and a half hours and you'll have 30 minutes to spare to clean up and finish up, you know, the last home stretch. You will be amazed at what you can do when you do that. But this is how you start to 
uh, craft your expectations accordingly. Because one of the saddest things that I have found in myself and in others is when we have a false sense of what to expect from ourselves. When we don't know how long it takes, what effort it takes, what materials and resources we need to get the expectations that we expect out of ourselves. And we set ourselves up for uh, failure, for uh, self-condemnation and and self-critique, harsh self-critique, because we simply don't know what we can realistically and reliably expect from ourselves. And so you do that by setting up these little small steps of confidence, okay? So once you start doing these, and I love to get people to start them with house chores because that's something that you can control. If you don't succeed, try again. You know, it's not going to be that big of a deal. And I want to tell you, those small wins of success to build up your confidence translate very easily over to whatever else it is that you're trying to do. And the reason why is because they get your whole body involved where you're actually getting up and moving. You're not just trying to be in your mind. There are a lot of times when I I, I have stuff I got to do. And by me getting up and moving and getting stuff organized and straightening up and all of these kinds of things, the, the ideas start coming and this is the next thing that you're going to start to learn when you do this. You're going to start to get clear paths of action to get what you expect because you will start to get a familiarity with yourself of what you can produce, how you can produce it and how you can move. And that will help you to get clear on step one, step two, step three, you know, and, and be, by doing that, you'll then be able to Take the time to brain dump everything that you want to accomplish or everything that you want to change and to uh, be able to uh, manifest, receive or live in or or have in your reality. And once you get to that point, you're able to then start acting, I mean, putting together an action plan. So that's how you uh, craft your expectations accordingly. Start with the little small steps to build confidence and then start establishing a clear path of action to get what you want and build your action plan. And then also be willing to be flexible to tweak the action plan as needed. Give yourself that flexibility. Don't be so rigid and don't be so down on yourself if what you want to do doesn't work out the way you expected it because you're still going to be overly optimistic even though you think you're not. And there are going to be things that take longer, but there will also be some things that don't take as long. So then the next thing is, is you want to reinforce that knowing. Mm -hmm, This is real important. And the way to do this is you need to anchor what you've decided to know with something that is established in you with a certainty. It's, it's, It's not cheating, but what it is, is it's loopholing. So if you need to know that you know a certain outcome that you've never had before, you want to anchor it with a knowing that you know that has a certainty that can be proven. For instance, something like if you know that you know that you are going to make $5,000 this month and you've never been able to make over three, or maybe you never made anything on your own before outside of your job. You want to anchor that certainty and that knowing with something like, you know that you know when you walk over to the light switch and you turn it on, the lights come on, provided there is electricity. You know that you know that when you press your car, uh, press the button or put the key in the ignition that your car is going to start provided it's working and has gas or electricity to do so you want to anchor it to the things that you do often and you don't you there's you, you know them so well that you don't even consider the knowing it's just a certainty anchoring That knowing that I know that I know, uh, and I only I'm I'm only using you know money because that's something that people can quickly grasp as you know an example, you know. So you anchor the fact that when you start your car, it turns on with this month I made five thousand dollars, and you notice you put whatever it is you want to know that you haven't done before in the past tense. This month I made 
because you are future casting and giving your universe, your uh, ability to produce and to self-prophesy, to make it happen, permission to go on and do it. You're giving your environment permission to conspire with itself to help you get what it is you want. And the next thing is, is filter. We talked about this earlier with what you see, what you hear, and what, you know, what's happening around you in your reality. You have to get a good filter for what you see and hear and filter out anything that's contrary to what you know as being um, irrelevant, invisible, or inconsequential. Let me say that one again because I kind of flubbed it. You want to set up a filter. And that filter is going to be on what you see, what you hear, uh, what, you know, even actions, all the stuff in the reality that's outside of you that is contrary to what you know. And you want to filter it for these three areas. It's either going to be irrelevant, meaning I don't care what you say. I know what I know. Or it's going to become invisible. I don't have time for that. That's that's not going to help me. Be gone. Poof. Or inconsequential. Yeah, you might think this, but I know different. And you keep moving. And so the next thing is, after you've reinforced your knowing, y'all, this is good stuff. And I and if you have to listen to this over and over again, feed your soul with it because this works and this helps you. So the next thing with getting to the point of knowing, because it is your answer. It is. If you've been confused, if you have been locked in your prison where you uh, feel like your mojo is gone, this is the answer. It's in what you know. And so the next thing, and this one is real powerful, and it might sound old school, but it's still the truth. And that is you want to hold the, your inner vision steady. You need to be, uh, there's a Bible scripture that uh, says, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding. Now it says in the Lord, but I'm going to put in here, always abounding, meaning that you are exponentially growing, expanding. And I put this in here, always abounding in the grace, faith, hope, joy, and love of what you know. Don't settle for anything until reality meets or exceeds your vision and expectations. So now in the last few minutes we have, we're going to spend some time just working on this part of holding the vision steady. Now, for some people, they're like the vision. Yes. What it is you hope for, what it is you know. You know, if your knowing has not been made real in your reality, you hold on to that knowing and this is how you're going to continue to bring it forth, how you're going to birth it, manifest it, attract it, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be by holding your vision steady. Now, when we talk about a vision, some people can have actual mental images and pictures. Some people's visions are written down in belief statements. And you can quickly do a belief statement by saying, I believe. And then you put down what you believe about what it is you know. That becomes your credo, your manifesto, your um, uh, guide. It becomes your pathway. And remember how I talked about that action plan up there where you're going to be um, crafting your expectations, that it, it helps to reinforce that as well. And so let's talk about grace, faith, hope, joy, and love, because they're very powerful. So with grace, always abounding in grace. Now, grace is a dispensation. It is a permission slip. It is a, uh, a credit, line of credit, if you will. And the Bible even talks about how each morning we have a brand new mercy and a brand new grace. And so when you have grace for something, that means you've been given a little extra oomph to do it. And the vision, when you hold that vision steady, you are reinforcing in yourself that you are immovable, that you are steadfast, and that you are going to use your ever-growing grace that you have been granted. And I'm going to tell you, if you can't figure out what grace is, do you know what grace is? Your ability to take in and exhale breath without assistance, without um, pain, that's a, that's a grace. Every morning when you get up and you're able to breathe in and breathe out, you've been granted a grace and a mercy. Okay? 
So don't don't get that twisted. Faith. Now, faith is real important because faith is coupled with expectations and knowing. Yeah, because your knowing, your faith, and your expectations all exist in a realm that supersedes what your current reality is. You see, faith is the evidence of things hoped for and not seen yet. And that is part of what helps to build and feed your um, knowing. And then hope. Now, there are different types of hope. But in this regard, your hope is a fuel, um, a propellant that continues to fuel your uh, faith. It continues to fuel your joy and your love. When you have hope, that means that you believe that what you got, what you're getting, you're going to receive. You can believe that it's going to happen for you. And joy. Now, joy is that well-being that is undeterred by what is happening. All hell could be breaking loose, but your joy remains. Joy can produce happiness, but happiness cannot produce joy. So I don't deal with joy because I know I'll get it. I mean, I I don't deal with uh, uh, happiness because I know I'll get it through joy. So joy is your strength. Mm -hmm. And then love. Love is the protector of your heart, your passions, what you care about. And when you are loving and knowing, uh, uh, not, and loving your knowing and loving the fact that you're going to produce, love becomes that uh, guard around you to keep you from losing it, to keep you from giving up, to keep you from falling back into self-pity, hopelessness, and depression. And so in the last few seconds that I have, mm -hmm, I am going to say this, that your answer is in your knowing. When you hold that vision steady and be steadfast, unmovable, make use of the grace you get every day. Strengthen your faith, your hope, your joy, and allow your love to guard you from any perils that try to come. So guess what? My time is up. I thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spiva, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom, with another podcast of Wisdom Smack. I'll see you tomorrow. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.